Hey there boys and girls, Lucky Skillfaker here and welcome back to another CSGO video. Today with the fourth part of finding a perfect sensitivity in CSGO. If you have not watched any of the other episodes, please go back now and watch them because those episodes will tell you the theory behind everything that we're talking about right now. However, if you already watched them, let's get right into it. So today we'll actually find out your perfect sensitivity. So the number that you have to put into your console or whatever and whatnot. We'll have two parts for this. Part one would be finding out your 360 range. This will be the range your mouse will need to go from the left to the right side of your probably huge or hopefully huge mouse pad. And you will have to set it up in a way so that it'll do one 360. You will then have this number and if it's too high you'll divide it by two. If it's too low you'll mu uh, multiply it by 1.5. You'll continue this until it's too high or too low so you don't like it anymore and you'll then you'll take the last two good values and part two comes in right there. Because with part 2 we have the fine tuning. You start with the previous two values, then you always take the average of both values and cross out the worst one. Now again you have two val new values and then you continue with all the three values again because you have the highest, the lowest and you do an average again. And then you're basically good to go. Of course this sounds a little confusing so we get right into it to the example to show you guys how it's done. So now you can get a piece of paper and a pen because you have to write down all the values but before we get into actually configuring and calculating the values there are basically three spots where you can do this in Dust 2 for example right here. Basically at this wall where everyone is always showing off all the spray patterns and all that stuff. You can also drop down uh, right here and this is basically another good area. What you will essentially have to use or need is a big wide open space that you can like move to the left, to the right and back and forth and you'll have a wall uh, with a spray pattern on or something like a board that you can track. However, my favorite spot is at long. If we fly over there, I can show you guys because you have a very, very wide open space that you can uh, utilize. And you also have uh, like stairs and other stuff so that you're not only like tracking to left and right, but if you want, you can also track up and down. So I'm talking about tracking. So what is actually tracking? This is the thing that you'll have to do. So again, just do like a little spray pattern on the wall right there so we can check it out. Just shoot a couple of times and basically make it the size of a hat. What you'll do now is you will have to keep your crosshair on it and you always want to stay on it as good as possible and be completely honest to yourself. Don't like try to copy your favorite pro player's sensitivity or anything like it. If you're like too jumpy, if you're uncomfortable like uh, following with it, you have to higher or lower sensitivity in order to be able to do that. And this is basically the test. You will have to just follow, uh, basically move around and keep your crosshair uh, tracking at the like the bullet decals. However, if you are having trouble or issues being honest with yourself, you can always place down a bot like this with bot place and bind it to a key. And you can just then again, as you can see, put down a bot and basically track his head. This is the most important thing, only his head. And then again, as you can see, his name will pop up. So this means as long as the name is popping up, your sensitivity is good for you. If you're having trouble or if the name's not popping up enough, then you probably have to higher or lower it in order to again be comfortable again with it and to track it a little bit more like effectively. Okay, let's do some calculating. So in our example, again, this is just an imaginary number, our 360 range would be 2.4. We'll again have to divide this by 2 and we have to multiply it by 1.5. Then we'll get 3.6 and 1.2 as you can see on the screen right now. We'll try them both out and then we decide, oh well, 3.6 is not really my case. I liked 1.2 a lot better. So we'll cross it out, take the two new numbers and we'll again divide it by two because we divided it in the first time, so we'll have to keep dividing. If you would have multiplied it the first time, you'll have to keep multiplying. Then we'll have 0.6. Then I decide, oh, 0.6 isn't really that good either. So I'm left with 2.4 and 1.2. These will be my two values that I will use for part two. So for part 2 we now have our starting values which would be 2.4 and 1.2. We now take the average of that in case you suck at math, that's just adding them up and dividing them by 2, kind of obvious, and we'll have 1.8. These are our three starting values. Now we have to compare 2.4 and 1.2. Which one do you like better? So we decide 2.4 is not really our case, so we'll cross it out, which will leave us with 1.8 and 1.2. We'll again take the average of these two in our next step right here, and then you can see we have 1.8, 1.5 and 1.2. We again try the, hour, the, the top one and the bottom one which would be 1.8 and 1.2. And we again decide well 1.8 is still a little too high. So crossing that out which will leave us with 1.5 and 1.2. Again taking the average which would be 1.35 and we have a new line. And you basically repeat this over and over and over again and always cross out either the highest or the lowest that you're not really like comfortable with. And at the end you will have like really close numbers because it's like getting closer and closer to your actual sensitivity. So at the end right here we have 
uh, 1.35, 1.33 and 1.31. This means um, you're basically getting really close. And in this example, it's basically so that you just take the middle value at the end, the average value, and this should be your new sensitivity that you're really comfortable with and that you have to try out. So how do you try it out? You already like did it with tracking and this should work well. However, there's also another thing which is kind of important and this is again something that has to do with arm versus wrist movement. So you'll have to load up another map right here. So the map you'll have to load up now is called Training Aim CSGO 2. It's in the workshop, just go there, download it and then start it offline with bots. And as we start the map right here, we can see that we're now in a room. In this room you have a couple of different training modes and most of those modes actually train your wrist movement, so you're flicking. This is not necessarily the same as just following or tracking a target, but it's more like snapping to a target and just quickly getting a headshot, especially if like the enemy was at an like, unexpected place or something like that. So if you're doing this, make sure to again be honest to you and try to be as good as possible. If you feel like you're not really doing all that well, you again can go back and repeat the previous test, which again is taking some time. You always should keep in mind that depending on the role you're playing, for example, if you're an entry fragger, you might like a, a higher sensitivity and you're always like more of a close range player because you're entering the site first, you're trying to get the kills, or maybe you're somewhat of a support or long range player, then you're kind of hanging back a little more, trying to get like those long range headshots and stuff like that. So a lower sensitivity actually will benefit you more. So this will actually just again get closer to your average value of uh, the sensitivity that you're good with but you should kind of like complement it a little bit more to your playstyle. Of course you should be able to kind of play all playstyles but then again you should kind of hone your skills in where you're at, best at. Also, before I forget it, this guide was mainly based on another guide from an ex-competitive um, like competitive 1.6 player called Impulsive. There's also a link to his guide in kind of text form in the description down below in case you're more of a reading type and not like into the video stuff so that you can find it on your out on your own again. I kind of modified it a little bit, but uh, essentially it's still the same. So yeah, once again, I hope you enjoyed this video and like a skill figure out.